They can't prove that. They don't have God's mind on that matter. But let's just say for the sake of argument that we found God's storehouse. You know, we've been knocking doors up in Danville quite a bit lately. I don't know how many, how many uh, doors we've knocked on. I believe uh, at one point we were over 4,000, I know. I'm going to say it's probably closer to five, maybe 6,000 doors that we knocked on. But there's a place up on Westover, Westover Drive in Danville, and you drive by there. It's not too far from the intersection there where uh, IHOP is. Turn, go back to the left if you're coming up Piedmont Drive. And there's a big old building that says God's Storehouse. God's Storehouse. That's where it is. Now, all you people out there who are taking up tithes and the preacher's telling you to take the tithes to the storehouse, you don't give them to your pastor. You don't give them to your pastor. You take them up here to this building. See? And just, and just tell your pastor your preacher, your, your bishop, or whoever it is that, that's telling you you need to take up tithes, just say, well, you know, I, I can't give it to you. I need to give it to the storehouse. And see, our church is the, the first church of the apostolic born-again free blood uh, number seven, and it doesn't say God's storehouse, so I'm going to take my money to the storehouse. I meant to have a picture of that building for you. So you just take it up there. I'll tell you where it is. It's up there on Westover Drive. Take all your tithes, all you people that are tithing, God's storehouse is right there in Danville. You just take it up there. And you go back and tell your preacher, I'm not paying you tithes because that's not the storehouse. I'm doing what the Bible says. I'm going to do Malachi 3.10. I'm going to take it to the storehouse. Go ahead. Go ahead. Kellum, Price, Jackie Poe, all you people that are tithing, all you, all you guys that are up there tithing, you just, all your, your, your members, Y'all just tell them to take, take your tithes to the, to the God's storehouse in Danville. Oh, no, you're going to have problems with that, aren't you? See? Somebody's already come up with a biblical or scriptural name, see? They come up with a scriptural name, and they're going to take all your tithes. Well, it serves you right. You see, when you're not listening to what God says on the matter, you might get hoodwinked. And I, ho and I hope that, that these people are at God's storehouse, if they're going to, uh, if they're going to hoodwink people, I hope they hoodwink all you folks out here who are being duped in, in, the, in the paying ties. If you're going to stay there and let yourself be snookered, you might as well just take your money somewhere. At least it's, at least it's scriptural. Scriptural name, anyway. God's storehouse. Just take your money up there. Take your ties up there. Don't give it to your local church now. That's not the storehouse. Here's the storehouse. You see? Why don't you get the mind of God on the matter? You get the mind of God on the matter, and you know what? You won't be paying tithes anywhere. You don't have to pay tithes because the mind of God on the matter is is to, on the first day of the week, <clears throat> lay by in store as God has prospered you. That's, that's the mind of God on the matter. The mind of God on the matter is up on the first day of the week, here's how you give. You give as you have, uh, according as you purpose in your heart, that's what you purpose to give, <clears throat> not what the preacher tells you to give. Let him give not grudgingly, nor of necessity. Someone tells you you have to give. That's a necessity, friend. <coughs> For God loves the chill forgiver. <coughs> Excuse me. You see, if you'd listen to the mind of God on the matter, let God give you a piece of his mind, you wouldn't be giving your money to all these, all these uh, uh, false teachers and false prophets, these, these pastors and bishops and rabbis who are, who are uh, driving these great big cars and living in these great big houses. You see these guys with this, this uh, uh, abbreviation in front of their name, REV? You know, all these so-called REVs? You know what that stands for? REV? I used to think it stood for rest, eat, and visit. That's all they did. I think it stands now for a real expensive vehicle because that's what they're doing with your money. See, they're just living high on the hog on, on your expense because you're not listening to what God says. You're not letting God give you a piece of his mind when it comes to what you do in worship. You see, we're trying to help you out, friends. We're trying to help you out. Let me ask you this. From whose mind? You want to talk about raising money? From whose mind did this come?
from whose mind? Church bake sale and yard sale. Who, who devised that? Whose mind that come from? You won't read about it in God, from God's mind. God didn't even think about it. God didn't command it. He didn't speak it. He didn't even think about it. You see? A piece of God's mind, and you'd know how to raise money. Church raised money with bake sales. You know what these guys from the uh, North Carolina Restoration Church out here in front of Walmart, you know what they're doing? Big old bake sale. Big old bake sale. Now, where did they get the, where did they get the authority for that? From whose mind did that come from? Somebody came up with a good idea. You know what? I'll have me a bake sale, and uh, I'll just raise a little money in the name of the church. And we'll just let everybody do it because, after all, everybody will give to a charity. That's what these guys out here do at Walmart. Come Christmas time, these people out here with the ding a you know, these ding a out here in front of Walmart, they want your money. The Salvation Army is the church, my friend. And all they're doing is begging for your money. See? You need to let God give you a piece of his mind. See, the, uh, the church, the church that came from his mind, the church of Christ, it wouldn't be out here ding a -ling -ing. It won't be out here selling, selling cookies. It won't be out here, members of the church uh, of Christ, they won't be out here having yard sales and flea markets to raise money for the church. Whose mind did that, came from, did that come from? Wasn't God's mind. Wasn't God's mind. What about this? What about this hot dog sale? Hot dog sale and gospel sing. First church of the living God. They're in Eden. We're going to sell hot dogs. Well, how about that? Holy hot dogs. Whose mind did that come from? We're going to raise money. Why don't we sell some hot dogs? Why don't you do what God says, get a piece of God's mind, and do what God says, and upon the first day of the week, lay by and store as God as you've been prospered, and tell your members not to give a tenth, but let them give a free will offering, Stop putting the burden on them, and you'll probably get more. You know, we've been having a, we had a, a tent meeting, two week tent meeting in in uh, Mad Dan. Uh, about a week and a half tent meeting over here in Danville. We've had we had two week tent meetings nearly every time. One one time we put up a, the tent for four weeks, two weeks in Martinsville, two weeks in Danville. You know how many times we passed the plate? Not a single one. Two-week tent meeting in, in Eden. How many times have we put up past the bucket? Not a single time. You know why? Because we let God give us a piece of his mind. He gave us a piece of his mind, and he said, you know what? If you'll give free will offering, people will, give, will be more generous. Yeah, they'll be more generous. You don't put a burden on them. See, God knows the mind of my, how men work. Why don't you let God give you a piece of his mind? Why don't you let God give you a piece of his mind? Whose mind is this from? Whose mind is this from? Look at this one. Whose mind is this from? Yoga. Yoga classes at the First Presbyterian Church in Eden. Here it is. $60 for six lessons. All fees go to the church building fund so they're tax deductible. Well, isn't that just nifty? You come take yoga, and you can pay for our church building. Now, who came up with that? Now, that's pretty slick salesman, but you didn't get it from the mind of God. Again, God said, lay by and store upon the first day of the week. You don't have to beg people to come and, oh, tax deductible yoga classes. Was it yoga for Yahweh? You know? Where did you get that from, friends? You see, wh where do you draw the line? And see, when someone comes up with this out of their mind, see, man's little, uh, uh, some man with a little pea brain compared to God says, you know what, I think we can snooker the whole community and we'll get them, we'll get the community to come pay for our, our church building. That's what the church, at, church of God in Ridgeway did. They had telethons to pay for their TV program. And every time they had a begathon, we'd get right behind them and we'd say, folks in the community, guess what? They just, they're getting you to pay for their television program. And I don't even think they're on TV anymore, are they? 
No? Is that a no? All right. As far as I know, they're on TV anymore. Why? Because the community quit g- giving them money. They quit giving them money. The begathons. Now, friends, why don't you let God give you a piece of his mind? He'll free you. He'll free you from that burden of tithing. Because it's not in the New Testament. It is not in the New Testament. You see, get, a mind, get the mind of God on the matter. Let him give you a piece of his mind. Let him give you a piece of his mind. So whose mind does this come from? It's not God. It had to come from man. And here's what happens. When you open the door, when you open the door for all kinds of foolishness, like, you know, yoga for Yahweh or, you know, I, I don't know, uh, uh, cookies for Christ or whatever they're doing, here's what happens. You get all kinds of foolishness that comes as a result of people not listening to God, letting him give them a peace of mind on things like worship. Here's the article. Church welcomes pious pets in Massachusetts. The Pilgrim Congregational Church is going to the dogs. And that's just fine with Reverend Rachel Bickford. The church launched what Bickford hopes will be a weekly woof in worship services. I tell you what, I've, I've, I've seen Geno Jennings and that guy, that reading him, William, I've seen them woofing in worship. And he says, uh, Sunday when parishioners can bring their pious pooches. Bigford got the idea. Now watch this. Watch the idea. Bigford got the idea. Now whose idea was it? Whose idea was it? From whose mind did it come? I know you. I know you're seeing it. It's not God's mind. Bigford got the idea. The woman preacher got the idea from reading the Bible. She came across a psalm that talks about letting all living things praise the Lord while her own dogs were at her feet. Well, since all living things are supposed to praise the Lord, we'll just bring the dogs into worship. And she got the idea. Well, I know she hadn't been listening to God. God, if she'd been listening to God, let him give her, give her a piece of his mind. She wouldn't even be a reverend. She wouldn't even be a preacher. Why? Because the mind of God on the matter is, because the mind of God on the matter is, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 11 and 12. Paul said, Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection, but I suffer not a woman to teach nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. See, she wasn't letting God give her a piece of, her, of his mind. She wasn't going to have anything of it. And when you reject... Uh, God talking to you in one area, guess what happens? The next thing you know, you'll have dogs in worship. Now, now what are we supposed to do, friends? What if, how are we supposed to act here? My Bible says that Jesus gave the command, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Now, does that mean we're going to need Dr. Doolittle here to talk to the animals? Is that what we're coming to? Are we coming to the, the point that we can't listen to God and, and rationalize what God wants? Have we just thrown common sense out the window? Now we got woofing in worship, and the next thing we know is Dr. Doolittle is going to come preach to us because we're going to bring the dogs into the worship. And the Bible says, preach the gospel to every creature. First Col- uh, Colossians 1.23, Paul said that if you continue in the faith grounded and settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which ye have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven. Should we learn to talk like talk to the animals in order to do God's will? Friends, you see what happens when you stop listening to God and you start listening to somebody come up with their own ideas? We're trying to get you back to the mind of God. We want you to listen, listen get, let God give you a piece of his mind. Now, here's the mind of God. Here's the mind of God on the matter. When it comes to salvation... You think about this. God never said one thing about things like the mourner's bench. God never never said anything about that. He never commanded, never spake it, never even came to his mind. We don't have a piece of God's mind when it comes to authority for things like the mourner's bench. Get down here on your knees and pray through and let someone beat you on the back till morning. Now, where's the mind of God on that matter? Or where's the mind of God on 
things like the sinner's prayer. Listen to these guys. Not a single one of them is going to give you scripture on, on the sinner's prayer. They're going to tell you to do it, but they won't tell you where it's from. And those of you who are listening right now, I want you to pray this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Lord Jesus, take away this pain for me. Lord, take away this pain in my body. Lord, bring healing to me. Lord, I ask you, Lord Jesus, to heal me. I ask you, Lord, to touch me. Lord Jesus, come into my life and save me. Lord Jesus, I lay down my life to you. Lord Jesus, here I am. Take me. Use me, Lord. Lord Jesus, right now, I'm listening to that man. And Lord, I'm listening to what they have to say. And Lord, I just accept you in my life right now. Take me, Lord. Show me what to do. In Jesus' name. And if you prayed that prayer with us today, you give us a call. Or you, you go by and see. I want you to pray with me today. Say this, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I ask you to save me. Before it's too late, I don't want to go to hell. I want to serve you for the rest of my life. I want to know the love of God that this man talked about today. I want to be a child of the Most High God. Ask him to do that. Ask him to come into your life. Call the prayer line today, 647-3537. We have someone here that will pray with you, that will lead you into a prayer of salvation. <laughs> Jesus, man, come into my heart. In the name of forgive me my sins. I want to know who he is. If you pray that prayer this evening, look at the bottom of the screen. And I just want to read this little sinner's prayer on this little path that I was telling you about. And if you don't know Christ today, if you'll just pray this very prayer, and I'm just going to read it as a prayer, and then we're going to go right back into the singing. But if you don't know Christ today, just take a moment and, and receive him into your life. I tell you, Rodney, uh, the times we're living in, I wouldn't, want to, I wouldn't want to spend a minute without Christ in my heart. You're right. And, and it's so we simple to say this prayer that you're about to read to us. Right. And, and those that are watching my home, at home, Repeat what he's saying. Read it from your heart. Ask Jesus Christ into your heart. He'll change you. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Let's pray, right? Dear Jesus, I confess to you today that I'm a sinner. Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I believe that you are truly the Son of God. I invite you into my heart. Take control of my life. Wash away everything bad in my life through your blood. All right. Not a single one of them gave you a scripture from the mind of God, but they all prayed the sinner's prayer. Some of them praying to Jesus, some of them praying to God, but they all tell you to say something that's not in the Bible. Friends, where is God's mind on this book, on this verse, or this, or this passage, this, this prayer that everybody's telling you to pray? Do you stop and ask yourself ever, where is that in the Bible? Can I please get a piece of God's mind on the matter? That's what we're trying to help you, friends. But see, there's nothing in the Bible on that. But what about these warm, fuzzy feelings? You know, friends, this is what the, what the, uh, the Mormons say. In Doctrine and Covenants, Covenants, sorry about that. Let me just try to move this to the uh, front All right, quick. In Doctrine and Covenants, chapter 9, verses, uh, verses uh, 8. But behold, I say unto you that you must study it out in your mind. Then you must ask me if it is right. And if it is right, I will cause that your bosom shall burn within you. Therefore, you shall feel that it is right. Now, that's how the Mormons will tell you. You'll know that the words of the Book of Mormon are right. You just pray, ask God, and it'll burn within you. And you'll know. You'll just feel that it's right. Now, are we going to accept that? Are, are you going to accept that as, as a piece of God's mind? Are we going to accept that from the Mormons? I know you're shaking your head. No, we're not going to accept that. Well, if you won't accept it from the Mormons, why do you, would you accept it from the Methodists? Here's what John Wesley said about his conversion experience. He says, I felt my heart strangely warmed. I felt I did trust in Christ alone for salvation. And assurance was given me that he had taken away my sins, even mine, and saved me from the law of sin and death. 
Now that's that's John Wesley. John Wesley had the same had the same warm feeling. His heart was strangely warmed. The Mormons have a warm burning sensation inside of them, and they know it's right. They feel it's right. He felt it's right. Yet one feeling led uh, uh, led one to produce Mormonism. The other feeling produces Methodism. How do you know the difference between the feelings? You know, some of you Mormons out there might really be Methodists. And some of you Methodists might really be Mormons. Y'all might have the wrong feelings. Why not just get a piece of God's mind on the matter and let him tell you what to do to be saved? You see? Wouldn't it be, that, wouldn't it be simpler? And that's exactly what, what, what happens. God's mind on the matter is, is very, really, really very clear. Hear the word of God, Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Go ahead and put the phone lines up. <clears throat> Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Isn't that simple? You have to hear what God says. Faith comes from hearing, getting a piece of God's mind. Faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of God. Not listening to what a man says, not listening to something that didn't come from God's mind, but listening to what God said. Believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. You see, you have to believe that. John 8 and verse 24. Jesus said, if you believe not that I'm he, you'll die in your sins. And so you have to believe. You have to believe. Hearing the word of God produces faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God, Hebrews eleven six. So you have to have you have to have hearing and believing. You're on the word from the Lord. Yes, ma'am. You're doing a very good job tonight. I mean, exposing the uh, heresy <laughs> in in our uh, churches. Um, but uh, I have a friend that's been watching, and uh, he's he's got a really good idea. Okay. He said he thinks he's going to open him up a church called. The Church of a Dollar Bill. That's what they all are, really, isn't it? That's it. Church of the Dollar Bill. Yep. Yeah. That's right. He, he, he's just going to be honest about it. Right. Right. Just be upfront about it. <clears throat> just send me your money, and I'm not going to give you anything in return for it. That's all right. So, well, that's what it's all about, I'm afraid. I'm we're afraid so, too. We're, we're trying to turn turn some minds. Yeah. Turn some hearts on from that right. from that business, so... You're doing a good job. All right. Thank you for your call. Bye-bye. All right. Church of the dollar bill. Well, that's what they have minds up. Well, I'll be called. But see, here's God's mind on the matter. You want to be saved? Hear the, hear the word. <clears throat> the word of faith is what this is. The word that produces faith. Believe that Jesus Christ is Son of God. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. For he that cometh God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder. Of them that diligently seek him. <clears throat> so you have to have faith. You have to have faith. Now, watch, watch how simple it is. All right, we've got another call. You're on the word from the Lord. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, uh, yes, sir. Uh, this is my first call ever, but hey, I kind of like to hear someone different, you know, with an attitude that is not just, you know, you know, that's just washed and dry, you know, that, in, you know, which is of God, you know, it's, you know, it's something different. Uh, I don't guess I do know what you mean. You mean? You know how stuff is beating our brains uh, every day, from like television, whatever, you mm -hmm. know, like I said, Mormon, <coughs> Methodist, Presbyterian, Episcopal, and all, you know, it's good to see something different for a change. You okay. Know? So you're, you're saying we're different from what everybody else is saying? Yes, sir. Okay, and, and I'm going to tell you why. It's because we're trying to give you the Bible, and they're not so much they're not concerned about it so much. Oh, no, sir. Yeah. Hey, and I'm glad to see that. You know, hey, it's <clears> good to see someone on television who is not, you know, uh, you know, with a hat out, you know, with a monkey on his back saying, you know, follow me, hey, and everything's going to be all right. Right. Well, have you so have you have you just now started catching our program? Yes, sir. Well, uh, no, sir. Hey, I've seen you before, but this is the first time that I've seen you on this, and this has really touched me. <clears throat> well, we're uh, we're normally on on Sunday nights, eight thirty to eight thirty to ten, Brother Johnny Robinson, and then 
on Thursday nights from 9 to 11 is we have we have two hours there so uh, but we we've, we've got this time because we've had our tent meeting going up and so we trying to do some extra TV time in connection with it so but but where are you from where do you, where do you live can I may I ask uh, yes sir uh, uh, well I just a city in, just a hey, city I've seen you up on 87 a couple of weeks <clears throat> hey and I come in and listen to you on 87 Yes, sir, up at the fairground. Were you up there oh, maybe a month or so ago? Mm, no. Okay. Well. Not us. Uh, <clears throat> listen a little closer. We actually, the tent that we just had up, the tent that we just had up used to belong to the man that had that tent. Was that a purple and white tent? Okay, you know, which, you know, it is good to hear the truth on TV instead right. of, you know, false. Religion. Well, what I'm saying, what I'm saying about the guy that had that tent, yes, sir. Uh, he used to own the tent that we put up, and we never take money up under it. But he always took money up under it. Well, and yes, I'm saying sir. so that's you know that's that's why we're different. You know, we're. Hey, we're, I'm glad to see that because you know, hey, I <clears> like that about the you know the uh, the apart. You know, we say people beg for money mm -hmm, and all. Mm -hmm. You know, which is good. Right. You well, know, because, hey, uh, God's people always prosper. If, if, we, if you ever come to one of our assemblies, sir, you'll never, you'll never hear us asking you for money. Well. Now, on the first day of the week, the Christians take up on the first day of the week. They lay by in store, but, but uh, our visitors, we never, we never ask them. So uh, why don't you come visit with us sometime? You live in Eden? Or, sir, or, hey, I will. Hey, and I appreciate you being on television, okay. sir. Okay. Well, I'd like to, uh, can I... Uh, <clears throat> can I maybe get with you and, and meet you sometime? Yes, sir. Can I put you on hold and you give the guy your number? Yes, sir. All right. All right. I'm going to put you on hold. Hey, and God bless you. <clears throat> All right. Good talking to you. Thanks for your call. All right. All right. You're on a word from the Lord. Yes, sir. Very nice guy. Just T turn your TV down. Just turn your TV down. Please. That way, you know, there's not, not any feedback. Hello? Is that better? Yeah. Okay. Um, you know who I am. I'm yeah. Kenny. Yeah. Yeah, I know who you are. I've talked with you several times. Right. I'd like to go back to Proverbs. Okay. Would you like to go there? Yeah. If, if we just let's if we can just get to our point pretty quick. All right. Proverbs what? Proverbs 31. Proverbs 31. I'd like for you to read that. Well, can, can you just, let, let, I'll just let you make your point. My point is about drinking. Okay. Uh, if you read the last part of it, it says that drinking is for, for the lost and drinking is for the needy. I think it's what it says. Would you read that for me, please? Are you talking about 31 or 30? 31. The very end of it. The very end of 31 is about the virtuous woman. I think you're talking about chapter 30. The very end of chapter 30. Maybe I'm wrong. All right. Uh, uh, 30. You're right, brother. You're right. All right. It's, uh, but look, notice it right here. Uh, it's the the beginning but of thirty. Not thy strength, two women. The, the, the beginning of verse thirty-one. Now, now, I, I know you've been drinking tonight, haven't you? Haven't you? I'm still here, brother. I, I'm, I'm saying, how much you had to drink tonight? Because remember what I told you on the phone the other day. I said I don't want to talk to you when you've been drinking. Because I want your mind clear. You hear me, friend? I, I hear Can you. Can you hear me? Yes. All right. So, you, you've I'm been... calling out. Can't you understand? I, 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 I hear you. I'm calling out to you to help me. I, I'm, I'm going to try to help you, but I can't help you when you're not thinking clear. You've got to help me. I, I'm going to try to help you, Kim, but listen. One, The only way I can help you is if you're willing to clear your mind for a little bit so you can hear something from God. I'll be willing to do that. I'm trying. I'm trying. 
How, how about I call you tomorrow? All right. I've got your number. All right. Okay? All right. All right. All right. All right, I've, I've talked to that gentleman before, and just let me say this, he's, he's, uh, uh, he's struggling. I know you folks can tell he's struggling, but I'm going to tell you this, friends. Listen, the Bible says here in Proverbs 31, he's, he's what he brought up. Give not thy strength unto women, nor thy ways to them that destroyeth with that which destroyeth kings. It is not for kings, O the mule, it is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes strong drink, lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted. Alcohol perverts the judgment. And that's why I told him, I said, I don't want to talk to you when you've been drinking because your mind's not clear. You see? If, you, if you're going to be helped, and he's not the only one out there. I know some of you out there got problems with it, with drinking. One man called up here and told me he, he didn't think I was a very good guy because I didn't drink. But I'm telling you, I know what the Bible says about it. You don't, you, don't, you don't drink, the Bible says, it destroys. It would cause you to forget the law. God wants your mind clear so you can remember his law. David said, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. So, you know, that's why, that's why I'm not going to talk to someone who's been drinking. I want their mind clear. Then I can help them get over it. But it doesn't do me any good to put God's law into the mind of someone whose judgment is already clouded. It's not wise. It's not wise. Okay. You're on the word from the Lord. Hi, James. Hey. Uh, the guy that called in before the before the guy drinking there. Yeah. I'm hoping he's still watching. He's an old friend of mine. All right. I won't call his name, but I'd like to let him know that Jerry and Larry has been going up there with you guys for a long time and really loving it. And if he needed to ride or anything and uh, just come and see us and we're really glad to hear he's thinking about coming. All right. All right. Well, maybe we can get together with him. Thank you, James. All right. For will, bud. All right. <clears throat> so, uh, back to the mind of God on, on salvation. Now, friends, think about this. These guys aren't telling you what, what the mind of God says, but the mind of God says you have to confess Jesus Christ. These guys will tell you you confess your sins. The Bible says, or God's mind on the matter is, confess Christ. Acts 8 and verse 36 the eunuch said, see here is water what doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, if thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest and he said, and here's the, here's the confession, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. You confess Christ in order to get unto salvation. You see it's once you're saved in Christ that you confess your sins. That's when, that's when you can repent of your sins and confess them, 1 John 1, verse 9, and the blood of Christ will continue to cleanse you. But up at this point, you haven't touched the blood of Christ. You haven't conquered the blood of Christ. You have to repent of your sins, Acts 17, verse 30. It's a command. God commanded all men everywhere to repent. And then be baptized. You know, repentance demands works. Acts 26, verse 20. Bring forth fruit, meat for repentance, or, or works for repentance. You do something. How do you know someone's repenting? Well, how about they do something like be baptized for the remission of their sins? Acts 2.38. Why, Teresa, arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins. These guys say pray. These guys say pray, 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 pray. In Acts 22, there was a man named Saul Tarsus who had been praying for three days, and he was told to arise and be baptized and wash away your sins. Now, who's telling you the mind of God on the matter? Who telling you the mind of God on the matter? You want to work from the Lord? Doing? You want to work from the Lord? Hey, James, how you doing? I'm doing well. Uh, I just like to mention something to you about that guy called in drinking. I'm a counselor. Okay. For alcoholics and stuff. Right. And he was calling out to you for help. And I'm going to help him. To put him off to the mall. You sir, talk to that guy. Sir. If he's liable to do something tonight, then it's going to be going sir, on your conscience. Sir. I have talked with him, sir, sir, you know what? I'm not going to let you, I'm not going to uh, let you second guess what I've done. I've been dealing with this man. I've been dealing with sin before, so don't come and try to second guess what I'm doing with him. I've been talking to him on the phone several days. I talked to him today, talked to him yesterday. So I don't presume to tell me that you know better than I do with this guy. I don't care if you're a counselor or not. 
You don't know who this guy. You don't have any history with him, as far as I know. So don't be second guessing me. I know he's crying out for help. He, cried, he started crying on the phone with me the other day. And I told him the same thing. What good is it going to do for me to counsel with you about drinking when, when your mind's not clear to, to receive the instruction? Now, you may be a counselor for, according to man's knowledge, but my Bible says that, that uh, alcohol is going to cloud your judgment and take away the law. So why would I put the law into a mind that's going to, that's going to lose it the minute I put it in there? So thank you for your concern, but uh, I will... Uh, in this case, I, I think I'll take my own counsel or take the Lord's counsel. You want to work with the Lord? Hey, James, how you doing? Hey, I'm fine. Well, you kind of beat You know that guy who just called and said he's a counselor? Mm-hmm. He might want to see the Lord's counsel. That's exactly right. I don't know what kind of counselor he is, but it's of no matter at all if he's not obeying God's word. That's right. And most of these guys, most of these guys that are psychiatrists or whatever, they're, you know, how about how about listening to the the great psychiatrist of them all, Amen. The, the one who 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 uh, oh. who developed man's psyche. Amen. So uh, yeah, well I appreciate that. I appreciate the call. Yeah. All right, yeah, I, I, you know I may not be the I may not be a counselor or the son of a counselor, but I know this. I know what God's word says, and uh, I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to. Uh, Cast pearl to force wine. Man, if a man can't receive the instruction that will help him, you know why I put it there. So, <clears throat> these guys will not tell you what's on God's mind concerning salvation, but I will. I will. First Peter three twenty one says, uh, "The like figure whereunto baptism doth also now save us." They'll say, "Pray." They'll say, "Pray." Paul was praying; it didn't save him, but he arose and washed away his sins. He was baptized and washed away his sins. Now. Who's telling you the mind of God? Who's really telling you the mind of God? You know something else about the mind of God? Denominational preachers will tell you, once saved, always saved. They'll tell you that once you're saved, you can never fall. You can never, you can never fall. And if someone does sin, they say, well, you weren't really saved at all, after all. Well, I'd like to ask, Anybody who believes in once saved, always saved, if they have ever sinned after they were saved. And here's what's going to happen, friends. They're going to say they did sin because they know they're not sinlessly perfect. And they're going to say they did sin, and that right there tells you they must not really be saved to start with. By their own doctrine, by their own belief, out of their own mouth, they're going to say that they weren't really saved. But how about this? How about the Bible saying that you obtain your salvation by rendering obedience to the gospel, and then you remain faithful. You remain faithful to the Lord. Uh, Revelation 2.10, the Bible says, Be ye faithful unto death. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 27, he said, I keep under my body and bring it in subjection, lest by any means that I have preached to others, I myself shall be a castaway. He knew he could fall. He said it was a struggle. I constantly have to do it. If it wasn't, if it wasn't the case that you could fall, why did God write so much of the New Testament after he told people what to do to be saved? Did he just do it for filler? He wanted to write another uh, 20 books, so he put them in there for just for general reading? No, because he knew we needed our faith strengthened and examined so that we don't fall away and be lost and be cast away. You're on the work from the Lord. Yes, uh, James. Yes. Kenny again. Uh huh. I'd like to speak with the friend that called in earlier. Okay, well, Kenneth, you're going to turn your phone down, uh, the TV down. Exactly. And, and what's. And, I'll do and, that. Well, tell me what's on your mind, Kim. Uh, well, um, you don't have the Bible. You don't have nothing. What you have is you have a Hebrew God that you think you believe in. You don't know how terrible and horrible he was. Now, Kim, now, Kim, listen. This, this is what I'm talking about. I said I'm not going to talk to you when you're drinking because the other day you were telling me how, how, how right down the Scripture I am. How we give you right what the Bible says. Truth. Now, 
<clears throat> Kenneth, I'm not going to talk to you. I'm not. I'm not going to talk to you. You help me get that man's number. That's Kenneth, all I want. Kenneth, I'm going to. I'm going to tell you. I'm not going to talk to you when you're drinking. He seems like a very nice person. Well, maybe so. His number. Maybe so, but I'm not. I'm not going to try to get you in contact with him. I mean, I'm going to try to help you, Kenneth, but I'm telling you, I'm not going to talk to you when you're drinking. You know, the Bible says that that uh, that wine takes away the judgment from the from from God's word. Now, okay, if, if okay. you want, you want I, to I, talk I, about wine, Kenneth, listen. Hey, Kenneth. What you want to talk about? No, listen, Kenneth. I don't want to talk about wine because I know what you told me yesterday. Yesterday, you told me you get to drinking and then you get to thinking and then you want to talk. And I'm saying, if you want help from God's word, you need to start thinking about God's word before you start drinking. So you got it all backwards. You can't start drinking and then start thinking and then start trying to find God. You need to be sober and start find, trying to find God before you start drinking. But it seems to me that you don't really think you have a problem until after you start drinking. Then you start feeling bad. And I'm saying you need to think about some serious and grave things before you ever start drinking. So I'm not going to let you use our time when you know, when you know the problem that you're having is, is you, you don't uh, start trying to figure out what God wants for you until you start drinking. And you just, you know, you've got that, you've got that backwards, my friend. You've got that backwards. So uh, I'm, not go I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to let you take up the time here on, on this program. All right? So these individuals will t won't tell you the mind of God on the matter. I will. I'll tell you the mind of God on the matter because I know what he says. He's given us a piece of his mind right here. Now, you know, here's what we need to be concerned with, friends. Because God has given us a piece of his mind that we need. He's given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. 1 Timothy 2, uh, uh, 1 Timothy 3, uh, 1 Peter 1, verse 3. 2 Peter 1, verse 3. He's given us everything we need to to be uh, righteous, 2 Timothy 3 and verse 16. All scriptures given by inspiration of God and is proper for doctrine, for approval, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished with all good works. God has given us everything we need. Now, there's a lot that he hadn't given us. That's true enough. But what he has given us is just what we need to be godly. It's profitable for doctrine. It's profitable for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. <clears throat> so all we have to do then is go back and find out what the mind of God is on the matter. He has given us a piece of his mind. And what we need to do is listen when God gives us a piece of his mind. Because here's the consequences. If we don't listen when God gives a piece of his mind, we're going to be in trouble. Now, notice this. In Leviticus 24 and verse 10, the son of an Israelitish woman whose father, uh, of a, uh, whose father was an Egyptian <clears throat> went out among the children of Israel, and this son of the Israelitish woman and a man of Israel strove together in the camp, and the Israelitish woman's son blasphemed the name of the Lord and cursed, and they brought him unto, the Mo unto Moses. His mother's name was uh, uh, Shelomoth, and the daughter of uh, Dabri of the tribe of Dan, and they put him in ward that the mind of the Lord might be showed to them. So they put him in, they put him in ward, they, put him, they locked him up a little bit till they knew what God wanted to do. Friends, I can, I can tell you this. If you don't know what the mind of God is when it comes to doing his will, you're going to be in for a rude awakening when his mind is revealed about what's going to be done to those individuals who disobey him. Because notice this. When they found out the mind of the Lord on the matter, this is what they found out. The Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Bring forth him that hath cursed without the camp, and let all that heard him lay their hands upon his head, and let all the congregation stone him. And thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel, saying, Whosoever curseth his God shall bear his sin, and he that blasphemeth the name of the Lord 
shall surely be put to death, and all the congregation shall certainly stone him, as well as a stranger, as he that uh, as he that is born in the land, when he blasphemeth the name of the Lord, shall be put to death. God had already given them instruction about thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, back in Exodus chapter twenty. But when they found out the mind of the Lord on the matter was, when you blaspheme or you curse, it's the death penalty. He that killeth any man shall surely be put to death, and he that killeth a beast shall make it good, beast for beast. And if a man cause a blemish in his neighbor, as he hath done, he shall, uh, so shall it be done to him. Breach for breach, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, uh, as he hath caused a blemish in a man, so shall it be done to him again. <clears throat> God is giving the rules or the punishment for violating or harming someone else or cursing. These was the punishment. Friends, you don't want to be on the side of God when he has told you what he wants because when you find out that you're in a situation where you're going to be punished, the mind of God is going to be harsh. Now, we hear a lot about God as a loving God and a kind and gentle God and so forth. But if you don't heed the warning of God, if you don't hear God when he gives you a piece of his mind now, I can assure you, you don't want to hear him give you a piece of his mind later. Because God is a jealous God. He is a consuming fire. Yes, he's a loving God. Yes, he's a kind God. He's a merciful God. But he's also a just God. He's also a just God. And the other side of that coin of mercy is justice. And if you won't take God's uh, piece of God's mind now, what are you going to do later? See, God's giving you a piece of his mind about what will happen. He's telling you in advance. This is what's going to happen to you, friend. He's telling you in advance. This is what's going to happen in, uh, in, in the, on the day of judgment. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 10, We all stand before the judgment seat of Christ to receive the things done in his body, whether they be good or bad. We're going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ, <clears throat> and he's giving us warning. He's giving us a piece of his mind so that you can be prepared. You know, we were just watching the War of the Worlds or listening to it on, on TV and looking at some of the pictures as, as it came on right before this program. And they were talking, they were showing the headlines of all the people who panicked. They were listening to the radio and they thought that what was really happening was an invasion from Mars. And they panicked, they flocked to the TV stations or the radio stations, they flocked to the, the uh, <clears throat> newspapers they flocked to the, uh, 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 you know, the authorities trying to, trying to flee. They thought something terrible was going on. And all through the program, time and time again, they came on and they said, this is not real. This is not real. But no one was listening to that. It's not real. It's not real. And they were panicking because what was coming from the mind of Orson Welles. But when you get something from the mind from the Lord... From the mind of God, God gives you a piece of his mind. You know what happens? People sit there like a knot on a log. And they say, oh, I just don't care. You know what? If the Martians were landing right now, people would be, be scared to death. But when the Lord returns in the air, in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and obey not the gospel, I wonder how you're going to be feeling. How is it that you're going to be feeling? Are you going to sit there and say, well, uh, you know, it's not that big of a deal. No, I think you'll be you'll be running. You want to flee. You want to hide. To those who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with my, his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and obey not that obey not the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. You've got a piece of You've got a piece of God's mind right here in your hands, friend. You've got a piece of, of God's mind about what you must do to be saved. What you must do to be saved and what you must do to remain saved in order to inherit eternal life. And you've got a piece of God's mind about what's going to happen to you if you don't. It's a terrible thing. It ought, it ought to scare you to death, friend. It ought to scare you to death to, it, it, ought to, it ought to scare you to death to think that you're sitting there 
hearing what God says, but yet not accepting, yet not accepting, uh, uh, or not doing His will. Why is that, friends? Why is that? In Second Peter chapter three, verse seven, listen to what Peter says: The heavens and the earth, which now are the same word, are kept in store, reserved to fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. Un ungodly men reserved against reserved against a day of perdition. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises, some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us with not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord shall come as a thief at night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. God's telling you a piece of his mind. He's not telling you everything about what's going to happen in the end. But what he is telling us, friends, it ought to make you scared to death. It ought to make you want to fear and tremble like <clears throat> Agrippa. It ought to make you say, you know what? I want to become a Christian. I want to obey the gospel. I'm going to come out of these man-made churches. I'm going to give up all these man-made doctrines that, that I've been being fed, that can't be proven from the mind of God that are definitely from the mind of men I'm going to become a member of the church of Christ that's what you ought to be saying that's what you ought to be saying you ought to be saying I'm going to flee from these man made traditions and man made doctrines and I'm going to only go by what I get from the Lord God has given me a piece of his mind God's given me a piece of his mind why why do you tarry why do you tarry? Jesus said in Matthew 25, verse 41, Then shall he say unto also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. You know what's coming, friend. You know what's coming. God's telling you. And you don't want to get a piece of God's mind on the last day. You don't want to hear God tell you what he thinks about you when you've been sitting there time after time. And I know what. Those of you in Henry County, those of you in Henry County, you've been hearing the gospel proclaimed for a good 10 years. And I can assure you that on that day of judgment, when you're sitting there, you're sitting here today, and you're saying, you know what? I'm not going to be a member of the Church of Christ. I'd... I'd I'd, I'd stomp a mud hole in my kids if they came, like the lady said, fighting mad lady. One day you're going to say, oh, I wish I had it. Because what you're going to hear from the mind of God is not going to be pleasant. You know what the Bible says in Proverbs 1, verse 20? The Bible says that wisdom cries out in the, in the street. But when people don't heed wisdom, and this is God's word, wisdom is God's word, here's what's going to happen. God's going to laugh at you. Wisdom cries out. She uttered her voice in the street. She cries in the chief place of the concourse. In the openings of the gates, in the city, she uttered her words. We've been on top of Hollywood Hill broadcasting. We've been in, on Channel 57 broadcasting. Now we're here in Reedsville broadcasting. The truth, wisdom is crying out from the treetops saying, obey the gospel. But hold us this. Here's what we have to say. How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? And the scorners delight in the scorning, and the fools hate knowledge. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you, and I will make known my words unto you, because I have called, and ye have refused. I have stretched out my hand, and no man regarded, but ye have said it not all my counsel, and would none of my reproof, I will also I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as a desolation and your destruction cometh, cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish come upon you, then shall they call on me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but I shall not be found. They shall not find me. For they hated knowledge, did not choose fear of the Lord. They would none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. Therefore, 
They shall eat of their fruit of their own way and shall be filled with their own devices. Is that what's going to happen to you on the last day? Is that what you're going to hear from the mind of God? You know what? <clears throat> if you will do what God says, if you will obey what God says concerning salvation, if you will take a piece of God's mind, if you'll take a piece of God's mind about what to do to be saved, you know what you can have, friends? You can have peace of mind, P-E-A-C-E. -E. You can have peace of mind. You can rest knowing you have done what the Lord said do. It's just that simple. It's just that clear. Will you do it? We're going to take this last phone call. That's what we're going to, what we're going to do. You're on a word from the Lord. Hello, Brother Jay. Hey. I couldn't stay in Johnny at first. I thought he was a nut. And once I read the Bible for myself, I'm able to accept the truth now. All right. And it doesn't make me angry. I'm talking about the Lauren Hardy show on Wednesday. Don't worry about them. Some of y'all, get off of it, would you? Don't dare do that again. Shut that up. Shut that up. Shut that up. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm just going to take this last call. Yeah, I was just uh, speaking to the damn community. You know, I have a lot of friends in this community. Um, a few of them over here in the Whitmore Christian Church, and I, I talk to them, and, you know, they condemn the Baptists. They say they're going to hell because they don't teach the right baptism. They don't teach baptism right. And the, i got a lot of friends in, in Bandola Baptist Church. They say the Methodists are going to hell because they have women preachers. Right, right. <clears throat> the, the Methodists uh, went over and talked to uh, Stephen Greer at uh, Mount Olivet Methodist Church uh, a week or so ago, and he was telling me how that God had spoke to him and called him out of a Pentecostal church and told him to go preach in the Methodist church. You know, it's, you know, I, I hope that these people will, will realize what they're saying. And before it's too late. Before it's too late and, and open up their hearts to the word of God and, and be drawn closer well, to the knowledge of the truth. Well, I say, Mark, we, we've at least tried. You know, I That's mean, right. we had, you know, the tent had been up there in Danville. Uh, it's been in the Danville area twice. Once it was at Pelham, and now it's in Danville, and I'm sure it's going to go up again in, in uh, Danville area before all's said and done. But, you know, if people just keep refusing, I mean, we live in a very prosperous times. I don't care what the situation's like now, but we still live in a very prosperous times, and sometimes people just fight that materialism, and it's hard to overcome, and that's, that becomes their God. So, but we're trying. Yeah, yeah and I would like to say also that, that we had uh, three additions. God added three people to the Lord's church this week. That's exactly right. And, you know, no matter how long these, these Baptist churches and, and Baptist whatever has been going, uh, they're in vain. That God is he's not, he's not pleased with them. And, and right. Well, well, Mark, I, I'm, 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 I've got to go. I know you but, I, but, I pre but I appreciate your call, and I appreciate all your efforts this week during the tent meeting, and, and I just want to say I appreciate all those, all the brethren who came out and, and supported and worked hard to make it possible. So, uh, Likewise. So, uh, uh, so have a good night. So, friends, we want to, we want to tell you, you know, we do want you to have a peace of God's mind so you can have a peace of mind, and the way you do that is make sure that what you're hearing is a word from the Lord. Watch Johnny Robertson tomorrow night at... At 9, from 9 to 11, then we'll be back at our regular time on Thursday nights, 9 to 11, and then Friday nights, 9 to 11 again. So, but until next time, friends, make sure you're getting a word from the Lord. Have a good night.